we get into the video, I need to talk to you guys about some new LUTs that I have put on my digital store. I have some new C200 LUTs that I have been working on, as well as a new LUT for the Canon R5. It is a basic standard log, Canon log to Rec. 709 that I personally feel works and gives a better looking image than the standard Canon LUT that Canon provides. So, and it gives a more neutral look that is easier to match cameras with. It is built designed for that, in which you can use more creative looks to sort of get that, that look that you want. So definitely check out the digital store, but enough talking, let's get on to the video. What is up everybody, James Jackson here, back again with another video. If you're new to my channel, I do tips, tricks, news, and reviews for the film and video making industry. So if you do like the content here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and hit the likes. The likes definitely help us out so you can stay up to date on all the content going forth. So uh, this is a little bit late evening uh, video, and that's simply because uh, we got some developing news uh, out in the Canon world. Um, for those of us that's uh, been following Canon rumors, there's been a lot of rumored cameras be that besides the Canon R5 and the R6 that are now officially out and about. Everybody has them. Um, but there was rumors of other cameras coming out. One being was the flagship camera, the R1, as right now that is being officially called. Essentially, it was supposed to be the mirrorless version of the 1DX. And we knew some of the things that we knew about that it was going to be coming sometime next year in 2021. Uh, but really, that, we, that was really the only things that we knew about uh, going forth. But thanks to Canon Rumors, we have a little bit more details uh, going forth as we will see as I cut here. Now... You guys are probably noticing this is CR2. So if, for those of you that may not uh, know exactly, CR2 st pretty much stands for uh, that this is something that can, it looks to be tr it, well, true, but and they got enough sources to say that this is something that you should take with validity, but it's not, I, you wouldn't take, not don't take it to the bank with. But... Here's some development news that coming out about the R1, and there's one in particular that I think, if whether if you're a still shooter or a video shooter, this is very, very exciting. Uh, so, but first of all, that's if we go here, uh, Canon Rumors is reporting that I, they have been told that this camera won't simply be a mirrorless version of the 1DX Mark III, but it will be an upgrade. So... In that case, that essentially means that this is looking to be, uh, if we're looking at the mirrorless model, we should be expecting to get a lot of the similar features, especially for the video size. So at the very least, we should be looking at 5.5K RAW up to 60 frames per second, because it's not just a replacement, it's an upgrade. Now, does this upgrade possibly mean 6K, actual 6K recording? We don't know exactly just yet, uh, but they said it is going to be an upgrade. But that's not, again, we haven't gotten to the really exciting part. And I think this is probably the most exciting, probably is going to really shake up the market if this is confirmed and it's true. If we go back here, we will see uh, an all new image sensor process, uh, image sensor with a global shutter. That's right, folks. We are looking at a global shutter on the Canon EOS R1. That is at least what they are reporting right now. Again, nothing official yet, but there's, but this isn't the sort of the first time we've heard hints about this. Uh, there was talks about Canon putting in a camera it wasn't necessarily said to be the R1, but they did say that one, there is a sensor they're looking on to be a global shutter. But it looks like this is going to be the camera to have it. And if this is true, 
this is very a huge deal. Uh, global shutter. That this what this effectively means is. In terms of, let's talk about the steel side. And my man Gaston Shutters, I'm pretty sure you're going to be talking about this as well. You being more on the photography side. This means that mechanical shutter is pretty much dead with this camera. You can do electronic shutters. So for those that may be not understanding, um, so mechanical shutter basically is where you still use the shutter to basically black flap and have it's more of of analog it's an actual physical shutter whereas the electronic shuttle shutter is more of a digital cl click but essentially uh what this means is that one of the issues with electronic shutters is that especially in sports photography is that you, if you use it you're obviously going to get some banding with the roll with the rolling shutter if especially when you're dealing with lights that are not best designed for sports photography, which a lot of lights are because they're affordable. But for global shutter, this the rolling shutter is basically non-existent because it's take it's not taking line by line like rolling like a rolling shutter sensor is. This is taking it all at one frame, complete frame. So this is this is huge. That's just the still side. On the video side, which is you know affects us obviously, this means that when you, if you're dealing with some serious action, not just in sports, but just like if you're doing some action film, like a big car chase or something, you're basically not going to get that wobble effect that you see a lot in a lot of little cameras. So this is a big big deal. Uh, a global shutter is going could be very game changing in this market. The other thing they talk about is a groundbreaking new AF system above the EOS R5 and the R6, which says a lot about this camera because the R5 and R6 autofocus system is just flat out amazing. Uh, it's so intelligent, it can still detect the person's head even if they're turned around. It finds the eye so easily both humans as well as animals, before like even we, even before I find the eye, it finds the eye so quickly. So the fact that th this autofocus is going to be even better beyond that, um, again, this is, we have to see it in practice. It's right now, it's just talk, but we can see it in practice. So hopefully this holds up and this holds true. And then the fastest frame rate for a stills camera ever from Canon which says a lot because the 1DX Mark III did 20 frames a second. Uh, and if you go to the live view mode, it did 20 frames a second in, in both the electronic shutter, but as well as the mechanical shutter. So if this is supposed to be the fastest, how, so how fast are we actually talking about? Are we talking, are we talking 24 frames? Are, are we 30 frames? Are we actually going to get like being able to do like a film style like as fast as like making it look like actual film? This is this is really really exciting at least on the still side. And then finally, the announcement is supposed to come at the second half of twenty twenty one. But that is it. But the thing, the reason why I brought this up because of the global shutter. The global shutter. If, if they keep everything of the 1DX and then maybe make some improvement, whether if it's mostly just in stills or actually in video, maybe they improve, like they do make it like a 6K, 60 frames per second, or even higher. But I don't think, it, for this particular camera, I don't think they necessarily need to do that. The global shutter is enough. To me, what would make a difference, like if they really, really amp up the dynamic range. So, whereas like the dynamic range is on the level of the C300 Mark III as well as the C70 and the C500. If the dynamic range of this camera can be on that level, this could be an exciting camera uh, to watch. And it will be interesting to see the pricing of this camera when it comes out. But let me know what you guys think about this announcement. 
Does this pique your interest of the global shutter? And for those of you that may have been looking at something like the red Komodo, if we find out more and we get the sense that, you know, especially on the dynamic range side that it's been improved, would this be a camera that you would consider looking at? Let me know, leave a comment below, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care everyone.